Okay, so let's start with a quick recap of what we have done so far. Um, we have learned that we can create single particle states in an interacting quantum field theory by acting on with A in dagger on vacuum. Okay. And this is normalization and this gives us in state p in ok and also we saw that if we take a in and act on a single particle state you can put an in here <coughs> then this will kill this particle and give you vacuum These are anyway some numbers, some functions. What is important here is that you get vacuum. Okay, that's the state you produce. Where A in dagger P is 1 over square root of Z limit T going to minus t1 minus i epsilon a with a subscript t a dagger with a subscript t ok this is an <coughs> a in dagger and a in p is the following Okay, where this z was defined to be the following. So, this matrix element of phi in vacuum and single particle state, okay, this is defined to be square root of z with a factor of 2 pi 3 halves in the denominator. Okay, and what was a t of p? that was plus i d cube x f p t x ok and a t dagger p that is this expression where f p t x ok this is all we have done so far ok remember in the manner I am doing I am not being super careful but if you want to be very careful then you should uh, define these in states carefully and by by uh, folding them with appropriate functions so that when you take uh, that state and evolve backwards in time with Schrodinger equation you end up with a particle which is fairly localized in space at some point x which you choose ok and has a fairly well defined momentum but I would proceed without uh, those folding functions and the conclusions will be the same but if you want to be very careful you can uh, put in those functions ok so the recap is over I will give you an exercise which should be easy to do based on what we have done so far is that if you take a in meaning this a in which is which removes uh, a single part which removes single particle and gives you vacuum so if you were to take this operator and act not on a single particle state but on vacuum then it will kill the vacuum okay it will annihilate, annihilate it 
so you will get 0 okay this is something you should be able to argue so what you should do is you should um, yeah exactly this thing instead of cat k here you put cat omega so you correspondingly change these expressions and then try to argue what you are going to get and see that indeed you get 0 on the right hand side okay so that's an exercise you should do okay now I know how to create a single particle state okay by acting with a dagger on omega now I may I want to know how to create a two particles in state or a three particle in state or a state with any number of particles how I am going to do that now <clears throat> you might already be able to guess that since we have arranged everything in a manner that it follows or it mimics free field theory our um, naive guess would be that having multiple A daggers acting on vacuum will give you a, a state with several particles because that is what happens in free theory okay so let's try that and see whether indeed that happens so question is how do I create let's say this state or in general a state of this kind okay so that's the question and again if you want to be very careful you should put the folding functions which I am not going to do so our guess which is a good guess is that since a in dagger p acting on vacuum creates let me put a subscript one gives you a state which is proportional to a single particle state for the time being i'm not worried about the normalizations then we are get, we guess that a in dagger p one in dagger p2 that would be something proportional to this state with two labels okay so that's our guess or in general if i'm given a state yeah if i'm given a state which has these labels p1 to pn and if I act on this state with a in dagger of k then I am expecting based on my experience from free field theory and because I have I am mimicking uh, free field theory by defining a in and a in daggers that this thing should be proportional to a state which carries these labels okay meaning it just inserts a k in here okay so that's our expectation and let's see that whether this expectation is right now if what i'm expecting is correct then at the very least this state okay when I act with this A dagger on this state, this whatever you get here, okay, this we have to show, this we have to show that this is proportional to this state. But if I take this thing, then if my expectation is right that indeed I am going to get what is on the right hand side, then at least if I act on this, this object, this state with operator P mu, remember these are operators. okay operator p mu which is the operator which gives you the four momentum of that state and act on this this state 
okay then what i should get i should get this is my expectation right this is an, that i should get uh, that this is an eigen state of um, the four momentum operator meaning it is something proportional to again the same state so it should be proportional to the same state meaning it's an eigen state and what should be the proportionality it will be the eigen value of this operator which should be k mu plus p1 mu plus p2 mu pn mu okay that is what i should expect to get if indeed this is going to work so let's first verify this expectation whether it's correct or not so recall that p mu is the generator of translations right that is what we have learned in the the previous course first course on quantum field theory so p mu is the generator of translations so if i take commutator of p mu with this phi, field phi okay where phi is in the field of the interacting theory then it should generate translations which is this okay so what i'm doing here is see this is uh, the translation right because if you take phi and um, and do a taylor expansion then the first term would be proportional to del mu of phi okay times the times the times the translation okay so this is this object and this you already have seen in the previous course okay so remember here p mu and phi are both operators right phi is the field operator and p is the momentum operator so if you wish you can put uh, hats on this so p mu and phi are operators and that is why this commutator makes sense otherwise it would not make sense okay now given this result i can calculate the following object p mu a in dagger k okay so i take this operator and take a in dagger and find out the commutator now that is easy because here a in dagger is just a dagger t and it a dagger t is in terms of phi and some derivatives okay so we are going to substitute this okay, that's the reason why i listed down everything here so what will be that it will be p uh, p mu minus i over square root of z integral d cube x okay where i should put t equal to minus t 1 minus i epsilon why because i am using a in dagger here right a in dagger involves not time t but time uh, t should be replaced by minus t times 1 minus i epsilon okay so that's why i have put here or or you can put here uh, where okay now this minus i over root z these functions these derivatives these are all ordinary functions and ordinary derivatives they are not operators so this commutator really acts between p mu and phi not on not on these objects so i'll pull that out so minus i over square root of z integral d cube x f k t x then this time derivative which acts on both sides and then you have p mu from here 
commutator with phi tx. Okay, where this condition has to be supplied after you have taken the time derivative. <coughs> okay, so what then? Hmm. Now, this object is just del naught and p mu commutator with phi, I will put minus i del mu phi. Okay. That is good. Hmm. Del not phi. Okay. Now, you have on this phi two um, derivatives acting, one is del mu, another is del naught. So, what I will do is that I will take this derivative del mu okay, and put it on f of k by integration by parts. Okay. So, you remember if I do an integration by parts, uh, derivative will get shifted from this function to the other function to f k. Okay. But in doing so, you will pick up a minus sign okay? and then I can write here integrating by parts I will get minus i over square root of z or because I am going to integrate by parts the I will put that minus 2 plus okay that plus uh, that sign then you have integral d cube x the derivative del mu gets shifted on f so you get del mu f k okay then you have this time derivative and then minus i phi t x Okay. Now, this is same as i over square root of z. This will, this derivative will give you minus i k mu. Okay. And yeah, times f again and there is a minus i here, so that minus i I will bring out. Okay. So, this, this derivative generates minus i k mu times f. So, these two are here. This minus i I am keeping here and then what remains is this derivative acting on phi. Okay, so, let us go back and see what a dagger T p was it was minus i d cube x f derivative phi which is same as what you have here minus i f derivative phi and this integral. Okay. So, what you have got is the following you have um, so these integrals will be all absorbed into a in dagger p and what will be left is and of course uh, this on one over square root of z is also so let's see let's see again mm, minus i so i have to keep minus i also so this entire thing did i miss uh, square root of z yeah this there is also a factor of one over square root of z okay because i should uh, I, I want a in not a t dagger. So, there is a factor of square root of z 1 over square root of z that is here and then what is left is k mu which comes out of the integral k mu i times minus i which is 1. So, this i times this minus i is 1 and it gives you k mu 
and the remaining things make up a in dagger of of k or something has gone wrong in between no it's just Um, no, everything is fine. Yeah, everything is fine. It's just in my notes I made a mistake somewhere. Let me correct. Okay. Good. So, what did we get? We got the following that this commutator uh, P mu acting on P mu with A in dagger is same as k mu a in dagger. So, let me write down. a in dagger k, this commutator is equal to k mu. Remember, on the left you have index on the, uh, uh, you have an up index. Okay, so, on the right also you should have up index, you cannot put it down. And then we got a in dagger k. Okay, so this is nice. Why this is nice? Because it says that P mu A in dagger K, I am just opening up the expression for this commutator, is equal to A in dagger P, P mu, let me put K, plus K mu A in dagger K. Okay. And this is useful. This is this is telling you immediately that if you were to take this state. So let's take um, a in dagger k and act on p one to p n this in state, and then ask what is the momentum of this. Okay, it may or may not be an eigenstate of uh, this operator, but we are expecting that to happen. Okay, so let's see whether it, indeed it is true. Okay, so what I'll do is I will use this result which I have just proved. So p mu a in dagger acting on this will be I will use right hand side a in dagger. P mu and then you have this state. Sorry. P and plus K mu A in dagger K and then again you have P one. Okay, so what's right hand side? A in dagger. Now, this is already assumed to be an eigenstate of uh, momentum. So, this will be just P1 mu, P2 mu, mu times again the same thing. Let me write, okay, I am writing too much. plus this object. And the same thing here. Okay, so you see that you can factor out A in dagger acting on this state, both, both these terms have the same thing. And then you just sum up K mu and these things, uh, and this piece. So you get K mu plus P1 mu, Okay, times okay, so our expectation was right indeed. Um, this state here is this entire thing is an eigenstate of P mu with eigenvalues being just the sum of 
KNP. Okay. So A in dagger has energy and momentum as as that of the state at least this is established okay that this state has energy and momentum same as that of this state okay but we haven't established that this is indeed this state but at least as far as the energy and momentum are conserved we have shown that these two states uh, have the same same energy and momentum okay um, and if you follow the the argument um we this also means uh, using this uh, this result this result okay because you can start with vacuum and then act on a dagger a in dagger and create a state p now this state has momentum p okay but then you can act again with a dagger okay and that creates a new state which has momentum let's say so you have first one a first a dagger is with p1 second a dagger a in dagger is with p2 and the state crea created will have momentum p1 plus p2 okay a and so forth which means that which means that what we have argued is a in dagger p1 a in dagger p n okay acting on vacuum has energy and momentum as that of this state as that of the state this one okay that's what we have shown now i will show you something wrong happened now i will show you that indeed let us show that indeed next let us show that indeed a in dagger k acting on an in state gives you this okay before this i have not shown all i have done is i have talked about the energy and momentum being same for both these states on the left hand side and the right hand side but now i'm going to show you that indeed they are same states let me do it on a new page so we start in our uh, well repeated manner and write the following so let's look at a in dagger k and you know what i will do i will just insert a, a complete set of basis states okay the same thing which we have been doing over and over again so this is same as so here are our basis states complete set of basis states a in dagger k and p1 to pn okay so let's evaluate this factor okay i will carry along this this alpha not a just a second yeah okay so this is
summation over alpha. Okay. Now this other remaining factor, okay, I can write as um, minus i over square root of z. I am substituting the definition of a in dagger, okay, and we'll have integral d cube x. In fact, I should have. I could have done this minus i over square root of z integral d cube x f of k t x then we have this derivative acting on alpha phi and p 1 to p n where I have to put this time to be um, minus t 1 minus i epsilon. Okay. So, now we have this time derivative operator. So, let us find out all the places where time dependence is. So, time dependence is of course, not here because ket alpha is in, is in uh, Heisenberg picture. So, there is no time dependence here. Um, so, time dependence is in f k that is a simple time dependence and then there is phi. Okay. But the time dependence of phi is easy I can uh, I will just write down and also I will have to worry about the space dependence. So, I can so that I can integrate out over x again f k has a very simple exponential space dependence and phi also has a very simple um, space dependence. Okay. So, let us let us look at that. 